You know, sometimes you throw the dart, it doesn't hit the dartboard. Wasn't a fan of the Lobo. <laughs> you reach a point of limitation. I just said, I'm starting over. I can't see what's going on because half the mechanism is hidden. We were all looking at it like it was foreign. I see Otter Dual Solemn. I drive was, was perfect for that race. And I remember the first time I rode the show on a full suspension bike, I was laughing. The bicycle is supposed to be simple. That's its solution to the world. That bike solved the riddle. Riding for GT has always been something special for me uh, just because my dad uh, rode for GT for uh, a long time and he's still riding with some GT right now. I remember him showing up with the GT T1 which was a downhill bike with a gearbox and there was no drivetrain and it was such a, a special bike. I remember Eric Carter and Brian Lopes racing uh, the Four Cross in Leger in 2004. They were my idols. Then came Steve Peed. I watched him racing in Leger as well, sliding on that last corner before the finish line. And I raced a lot against uh, Nico Vulio as well. And obviously Nico is one of the greatest of all time. So. And especially, you know, for my dad, which raced with him a lot. Um, I think seeing Nico and myself for my dad on the podium together was probably something special. Seeing the progression as well of the brand and being part of it, you know, helping the development of the bike and seeing the progress every year is, you know, something that I really like. We came up with the AOS um, bikes, the sensors and the force mainly. Uh, Peter Denk was behind it. He's an engineer from Germany who worked for us for many years. And his technology was very new and revolutionary. And it still had a few iDrive patents that were integrated into that, even though we didn't call it iDrive anymore because it was, um, it was different to a big degree. And I was a little bit involved with the testing on that bike. It's making it a smarter system by starting off something that was so you know, high up there and then finding ways each year. It's like, well, you know what we can lose? We can take this down and take some weight out or however they did it and just simplifying it. And it was very crucial, the pivot point. One millimeter over would make the bike react completely different. And we would we had bikes wired with all these wires and sensors and measure it and put a lot of time into dialing it in. You know, it's, it's not dumbing it down, it's actually smarting it up. And a lot of companies I see doing that these days. They'll build something and you're like, oh, that looks cool, you know? And then if it doesn't work, they like, don't go back to the drawing board and try to make that better and then take what works on it and what doesn't work and improve on parts that don't work. They just try to start with something new. They're always catching up, I think. GT has taken this design and they've reconfigured it and given it such a, a long life with the reconfiguration. It's pretty amazing. I think the GT bikes are bikes you can get on and get comfortable with very quickly. You know, I've always felt like once you put your foot on the, on the new Fury or the new Force or, you know, any of those new bikes, you straight away feel confident and you can go fast. Good example is Martin. He rode his Fury last year, I think one or two days before he entered the uh, World Cup in La Bresse. Didn't ride at all on the bike. Maybe one day, like maybe a month before practice. 
first day of practice. Felt comfortable right away, even when we started testing those two days. And you know, three days after, I, I won the, my first downhill walk-up ever. He never had a moment where he did not feel comfortable. And then two weeks after, I was second uh, down in World Chap in Lanzarote. I think those bikes get you in the comfort zone and makes you go fast. At the moment, we're pretty much riding production bikes. We're not on something special that is not available for consumers, and it's the way it should be. Uh, my favorite bike is the Force. Uh, the reason why I like the fall so much is because you can go for a nice cross-country lap uh, on that bike. You can race enduro, um, but you can also go to bike parks and have tons of fun off that bike and pretty much you can do it all. So currently we're racing on the Force, uh, called the 69er with a 650 back wheel, 29er front wheel. That's our favorite enduro bike for sure. And downhill, we have the Fury, which is wow, it's yeah, by far the best downhill bike I've ever had in my hands. If I needed one bike in my garage, that would definitely be the, the Force. Um, the current system is the LTS. It's a bit different from the old LTS. Switching to the LTS which was such a huge improvement in terms of stability of the bike but also the way the suspension works. You know, myself and all the team could see straight away that uh, the bike was working better and was faster. We work closely with Lewis uh, these days. He's a uh, telemetry engineer. He listens to the feedback that we give him. He puts it on the computer and he makes the numbers work around that. It's a huge reward for, for us as well, having the engineers listening to what we want and making you know the best possible bike uh, for customers. Just an example is a new Force 29er aluminium. After last season, uh, I had for a few months at home, I could ride the bike, and now the bike is in production and Lewis did everything he could to make a bike the fastest possible. Your bike that you're riding now is better because they're racing this thing today, you know? I was lucky enough to take my adventures all over the globe in every corner and uh, been to over 70 countries and um, the GT bikes were often um, my partner in crime and never once I've had a problem with the bike in the field like where some technology would break, you know, and you like somewhere in the middle of nowhere in the Himalayas where there wouldn't be a GT dealer around the corner, you know. So you had to be able to trust those bikes and those bikes delivered, you know. It's pretty cool that I rode the very first GT full suspension bike ever and Today we're getting ready for the World Championships on one of the most sophisticated bikes out there, the current Fury. And you would put those two bikes next to each other, the way they've come, it's been so much development gone into it. Suspension in mountain biking, I think it will always kind of be centered around that, that current design that GT has right now. Well, GT has come to a point now where both Enduro and Downhill, I truly believe we have some of the best bikes in the world. Wrenching on those bikes, prepping them, getting them ready to race, it's fun. You know you send your riders off with a very good tool to perform. That's what they want. They want to ride down the hill in the best tools available. And when you're confident that you have that in, in your work stand before you send them off, it's, yeah, it's great. Such a huge reward when you cross the finish line and you made it in one piece and you, buy, you feel like your bike helps you a lot um, in those situations and when you push both yourself and the bike together, it's the best feeling ever to cross the finish line. I think it's never been funner than now. It feels good to know that you, know, you were part of that evolution. We all had the passion. But I know it changed my life, without a doubt. What these guys do now at the Rampage, it's unbelievable. One of the riders like, goes, hey man, we're gonna jump the whole thing. Who in their right mind would do that kind of stuff? It's been seven years now already. I'm riding for GT. Having people, you know, you know, it doesn't mean that I'm not gonna bleed blue and yell.